But let's quickly take a look at their teams. Only a couple players remain in the Players' Cup 3 Global Finals, so really excited to see who will make it through, especially from the loser side. Uh, Gabriel Gatti, we talked a lot about, uh, and really has been one of, if not the most consistent player in uh, these last couple of Players' Cups. He's actually the only player, once again, in the world to make it to all three Players' Cup Global Finals, and here he is with a deep run, running that team with Garchomp. <laughs> and of course, on the other end, Alberto Daza with that Reggie Gigas wheezing combination that you love so much, paired up with that Kellerex Shadow, the Thunderous Rillaboom, and the Urshifu. It's a shame to see these two players face off. I'm, ex I'm excited for this matchup, but these are such both interesting teams, and them facing off in losers' quarters means one of them is about to get eliminated right here, which is really sad to not see both of these teams go for it, because they're two of the most interesting teams out there, I feel. Yeah, definitely. I think if I actually had to pick, you know, our favorite teams uh, after the matches we covered yesterday, these two would be it. So I'm really excited to see how this shakes up. Uh, the Umbreon on Gabriel's team is really interesting because Umbreon is actually a solid answer into Calyrex Shadow Rider. Calyrex can't do very much against it. And what can be scary if you're on Gabriel's perspective is nothing else actually resists ghost type attacks. Uh, the late game Calyrex Shadow Rider is something to definitely watch out for. Uh, and that's why that, that team actually you know, does not typically prefer to max the Calyrex because Regigigas and Thunderous are such good max options. And so one of the main questions I have here is how do you actually deal with the Weezing plus Regigigas combination? It was super, super dominant yesterday. Uh, you know, Gabriel does have potential K1 on Whimsicott. He's also got that Charizard. There's that Sunny Day on Whimsicott. Zacian's also decent into the Regigigas. Uh, but I think this can be a really volatile matchup because even if you handle the Weezing Regigigas in the early game, Calyrex Shadow Rider can be really scary in the late game. So managing that speed control for Gabriel is going to be really important uh, because you don't want to just get outsped by Calyrex and get swept in the, in the end game. That's definitely the dangerous thing here about Alberto's team. There's so much offensive pressure to lead with the Regigigas, and there's so much pressure in the back. So the Regigigas can really start wheeling down resources, taking out big KOs, and then all of a sudden you have nothing left for the back, and then that just continues sweeping. So let's get over to this match to see how Gabriel is going to be responding to this. So out on this end, we will see that Weezing Regigigas to start that infamous combination going up against Gabriel's Charizard and Whimsicott here. So Weezy and Regigigas makes a lot of sense here. I think the only thing you're really worried about uh, if you're Alberto is that Zacian lead right away. And so Zacian doesn't come out. Gabriel opting to try to just G-Max Wildfire. And considering the sunny day, I really like this option. What can make this really dicey is the speed interaction between Regigigas and Charizard. We were just talking about speed ties. And both of these actually have base 100 speed and typically will be max speed here. So uh, we'll have to see who actually ends up going first. But I, I love the decision to just go for sunny day and G-Max Wildfire. Uh, the Regigigas shouldn't be able to actually get a one-hit KO on the Charizard here, and I think we've seen that Alberto's Weezing is a little bit bulkier, so even after a speed drop, I'm not sure you can just, you know, move before Charizard or uh, the ones that can attack. So even if Gabriel loses the potential speed tie here, you still get the Sunny Day off and the Wildfire into the Weezing. That might just be enough to pick up the KO on turn one, and if you get rid of Weezing, suddenly Regigigas is significantly weaker going into the next couple of turns. Yeah, that slow start ability, I mean, it's so powerful shut off, but if that Weezing goes down, the Regigigas is left useless out on the field here. Whimsicott going for that sunny day, of course, as we saw, and it'll be interesting to see. We saw that the Regigigas maxed first here. Is it also going to move forward? It is not, so the RSB tied and that Charizard winning the coin flip the second <laughs> time around. A huge hit, critical hit, mind you into that wheezing here and it goes down and this Reggie Gigas is gonna be not faring too well as that slow start ability turns on having its attack and speed does hit that max strike into the Charizard but doing pitiful damage in comparison to what you would normally see here. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly how you want to go up against Regigigas Weezing, right? I think yesterday when we saw Alberto play on stream, a lot of his opponents uh, just w weren't able to actually effectively knock out Weezing early on. And now Alberto could have just protected Weezing on turn one. Uh, maybe wasn't expecting to actually faint from the Sunny Day and the Wildfire combination. That was a critical hit, and this Charizard notably doesn't have Life Orb, so I'm wondering maybe Weezing actually could survive uh, if it's like fully invested in HP and special defense there. But critical hit there just ensures the knockout. And like you mentioned, Sierra, this Regigigas now really not doing very much damage. Did get a speed drop on both of these Pokemon. That actually could be really important. This looks like a really, really good start for Gabriel, uh, but 
you know, now you just want to push the lead even further, right? Go for uh, a tailwind potentially on that Whimsicott to outspeed. Uh, and the main question is Alberto certainly has Calyrex Shadow Rider in the back. You just want to make sure you can outspeed it and KO it in this end game. So positioning yourself to do that will be really, really critical. Gabriel here opting to go for the Tailwind and just tacking into the Urshifu. The Regigigas, of course, can go for things like Strike to knock down the speed, but other than that, it's not really putting too much pressure on. That Urshifu will go for the Sucker Punch just to pick up some chip into that Charizard here as Tailwind does get set up. Charizard with that max Airstream. <laughs> I mean, bringing, of course, bringing Urshifu right down to its Sash here. We'll get to stick around. Well, actually, no, there's going to be the Wildfire, so it does. the Sash doesn't even matter at this point. Getting that Wildfire on that first turn is just going to be absolutely huge here. The Red Gigas going for that Max Strike into the Whimsicott, dealing a good amount of damage, bringing it down to the Red, but unable to pick up that KO here. Yeah, notably going for that Max Strike over something like that Max Hailstorm, I think that's smart. You actually really want to get as many speed drops as possible. Gabriel's going for those Max Airstreams to kind of negate it, but I think... This obviously is such a monumentous lead for Gabriel. If Alberto wants to win this game, you have to manage to stall out the Tailwind, and then Calyrex really has to clean up. If Gabriel has Umbreon in the back, this game feels like a wrap, honestly, because even with Calyrex, uh, Calyrex plus Regigigas without, uh, or with the slow start activated, just feels like it can't do very much into an Umbreon, which gets access to, you know, that Foul Play and that Snarl. So we'll have to see which Pokemon Gabriel opted for the back. Uh, we know there's that Assault Nest Landorus as well. That can be solid. Azashian, I think we should certainly expect to see. But I, yeah, one thing that's really interesting here is I uh, you know you've been able to get a fair amount of damage you have that wildfire off as well I think Calyrex at this point basically really needs to stall out Tailwind so it feels like you need to go for you know protect maybe even multiple protects to uh, come out of the turns uh, and actually have some HP remaining so we'll have to see right now uh, one thing that's actually interesting is that yeah I think Charizard's at minus one speed but Tailwind is up Calyrex is at neutral my question is, I think Charizard and Calyrex here might actually speed type. My math is correct, if the, and Calyrex is max speed. They're both 222 speed, so there's a chance Calyrex can actually go first here before Charizard, and that would be huge. There's a cut going before both of them getting oh, a little does. bit of Calyrex does go first despite that tailwind and the Charizard's best efforts to get up that speed. Picks up that double KO here. Whimsicott and Charizard both going down. That and the Calyrex, of course, with the Grim Nate as well, getting a huge special attack boost here. And man, that's not what you want to see in a late game here. We were talking before the game how dangerous a late game Calyrex could be, and sure enough, that Calyrex is comes out on the field just causing havoc. Yeah, and Sierra, there's no Umbreon here either, which means like uh, Gabriel didn't actually end up bringing any Pokemon that resist. Uh, ghost right and so that's that's why i thought umbreon could be an interesting pick but you can certainly understand why gabriel uh, probably didn't feel super comfortable bringing it into a matchup when you're going up against a regigigas a wheezing with taunt and an urshifu but yeah calyrex actually moves before that charizard and i think typically both of these pokemon are going to want to be max speed so i think that actually very likely was a speed tie if, if charizard goes first there then the game should just instantly be over now you've got zashin and garchip you still have a couple turns of tailwind to work with so calyrex I think to win this game now, uh, needs to protect multiple turns uh, in order to pull this comeback off. It was nice on Gabriel's side that the Whimsicott didn't opt to Tailwind right off of the bat, which means it does get extended mm -hmm. out later into the match as well. Garchomp going, of course, for that Rock Slide. Is going to connect onto that Regigigas, picking up a little bit of chip damage. Slow Start is still active for so. Regigigas returning back with an Ice Punch and <laughs> just barely missing that KO there. That slow start really hurting it. Despite how much Garchomp hates Ice Types attacks, it's able to hold on and stick around for another turn here. Oh, this is going to be a close finish. I believe there's still one more turn of Tailwind here. So Alberto needs to get the double protect off right now with Calyrex uh, to win the game. Uh, and then you just win the game with the Nastro Barrage. Let's see. Does it get it? It does! It hits the double protect. Calyrex gets to stick around to wait out that last turn of it, Tailwind here, and wow, that is such a big, that's a one in three chance, that's such a big double protect here to close out the game. Missing that would surely just match done there, but this Calyrex managing to hold on, and this Garchomp going down as well with its own life orb damage, so just this Calyrex against this poor Zacian here.
Yeah, and we've seen this Calyrex is very speedy, so should be able to just have speed Zashi and it's already base speed is higher. It's gotten so many increased stages of special attack as well, so uh, Astral Barrage here should pick up the knockout. The Zashin is actually very bulky, it has max HP investment based off its HP stat, but Calyrex just is so strong. This is a single target Astral Barrage as well, so this is why you never give up, right? Alberto, even though he had a really, really tough turn one, was able to claw back into this, uh, you know, correctly going for those max strike speed drops and putting himself in a position where if, you know, the rolls go in your favor, if you win that speed tie and get a double protect off, yeah, now, you know, you can just win the game. The odds of that are obviously slim, but it is a win condition. And in the end, Alberto recognized that those were the two things that he needed to go in his favor to win this game. So, yeah, I mean, chance of winning that speed tie is basically 50-50. Like you mentioned, chance of getting that double protect, one in three. So it's a one in six chance to win the game and that's you know you take those especially after how brutal the start uh, of turn one was and yeah what a comeback here by alberto in the end yeah one in six odds to win the game definitely seen worse odds than that going on into pokemon and you have to play to any out that you can here Obviously, a couple things going right is all you need to shift the momentum. What an amazing comeback, though. Losing the Weezing on that very first turn there. Getting a little unlucky with that critical hit from Gabriel there, but still managing just to bring his way back into that match there, which is such a strong sweeper in Calyrex. So it was definitely a really fun match to watch. It kept going back and forth, too, which I loved, like... Aerol was in such a commanding position after taking out that wheezing, getting up some speed control, but losing that speed tie really just put him back on the, like, the back foot there, and man, that was just such a good match to watch. Yeah, and I'm curious what the adjustments are going to be for game two, because I think from Gabriel's side, the Landers, which is Assault Vest on his team, and the Umbreon both could be pretty viable picks here in this set, once again. Umbreon is so tough, right? Uh, it looked really good in that end game of game one, but the reality is that's such a specific scenario that you have to put yourself in because otherwise, you know, the Weezing can just taunt you. The Regigigas can just do really good damage with Max Strike. You don't do really anything in return other than maybe a Yawn or a Foul Play. And so Umbreon could have been really valuable and could have sealed up that first game if Gabriel brought it. But if you're bringing Umbreon, it means you're dropping something else, right? You really want Whimsicott. You really want Charizard because you can't really max Garchomp or Landorus T very easily in this set because both of those will actually just faint from a max hailstorm from the reggie gigas you don't even get to intimidate with the landris so feels like you're forced to bring whimsicott charizard and zashian then if you're bringing umbreon that means you're really lacking in late game damage and so that's the big question i think gabriel might feel content going with the same four pokemon once again the odds of him winning that game were pretty darn high he lost the speed tie and uh his opponent got a double protect to really seal up that game and so the majority of the time you will win that game so gabriel might feel comfortable just going with the same options and saying hey you know i got pretty unlucky in that last one but if we were to play it out again things will work out It'll be definitely interesting to see, too, if they do opt to go for the same start and stuff, if the GMAX Wildfire would have been enough to do something to that wheezing, because that critical hit and taking it out, I feel, was pretty big there. But that being said, let's get into this match here to see if there is any adjustments being made or if the players are just going to stick to the same old, same old. Reggie Gigas wheezing, of course, one of those combinations that's normally going to be typically the same with the lead, and it is going to be the Charizard and Whimsicott to start here on Gabriel end as well just opting to replay this beginning of the game here so i think if you're alberto right now you have to say hey i got pretty lucky to win that game but if we just make the same moves like it's very heavily in gabriel's favor right so my question is how does alberto alberto actually adjust and Part of it is maybe you try to deny Tailwind, right? If you go for a max Hailstorm onto Whimsicott, the uh, hail damage will actually pick up the KO onto Whimsicott after turn one, basically forcing the uh, turn one Tailwind. And, you know, Gabriel will probably want to go for something like a, a Sunny Day instead. So that that's, I think, in a mix-up that you could do with that Regigigas. Go for a Hailstorm to just immediately eliminate Whimsicott. That way, if you've eliminated the Whimsicott, there can't be Tailwind, and that means Calyrex Shadow Rider looks a lot better in the end game because you don't have to rely on actually double protecting uh, and and, you know, stalling out the Tailwind. Uh, Alberto's team is really, really offensive, right? So it's actually very difficult to stall out Tailwind unless you get a couple of lucky double protects like that last game. Of course. And we see the Regigigas, as usual, going for that first turn max here. It's going to be really interesting to see where he is targeting this time, as well as even if he tries to even go for, like, protecting that Weezing or something to not risk losing it on this very first turn here. Gabriel, of course, as we saw, maxing that Charizard. Really, really excited to see how this shakes up this time around with Gabriel opting to do the same thing, but with a potential switch up from Alberto's end. 
Yeah, and I think there are actually so many different options that both players can go for here. That Protect on Weezing, as you just called out Sierra, I think could be a fantastic play, but actually ends up not being Protect, so Weezing might just, you know, faint to this GMAX Wildfire again. But like we were asking, let's see if that critical hit in that last game actually mattered. The Raging Gigas going first this time, hitting a huge attack into this Charizard and getting that speed drop, so no more speed tie going forward here. That Charizard hitting back the GMAX Wildfire. This is going to be the moment of truth here. Oh, it does hang on! <laughs> this is hang on, but is it going to... Oh, it gets the berry, so the GMAX Wildfire damage between turns is not going to be picking, taking it out. That critical hit did matter. This Weezing gets to stick around, hit a huge sludge bomb into this Whimsicott, bringing it down to the Sash. I was very interested about that lack of protect here, but Weezing managing to hold on, I mean, it makes all the difference. Yeah, and so that, you know, definitely changes kind of how you view this game, right? Because in, in the first game, I was thinking, well, Charizard's so strong. You have the Sun, the Streamax Wildfire, Solar Power. Like, that should pick up the knockout, right? But uh, Alberto, as you see, is Weezing is really slow. A lot of players, actually, when they run Weezing plus Regigigas, like to invest speed in Weezing. So that after a speed drop, Weezing can outspeed the majority of Pokemon that are used in the format, right? Typically, anything are, like, in the 100 uh, speed tier, are a little, just a little bit higher. But in this case, it looks like Alberto's running a lot of special defense bulk. I wouldn't be surprised or even something like max HP, max special defense, critically survives the turn and with that berry does not faint, right? So this means now that Regigigas gets another full powered uh, max move off and that's really, really important. Uh, Weezing, of course, here could protect uh, I think, you know, with Whimsicott, you're definitely going to want to set up a Tailwind at some point, but it's really smart to switch out right now because the Prankster is shut down, right? With Prankster being shut down, that actually means Weezing and Regigigas can outspeed you. So Gabriel recognizes, hey, I need late game Tailwind. I can't stay in right now. Let me pull off the switch. Max straight. Hitting into that Zacian here. Um, resisted, not gonna be doing too much damage, but of course, picking up another speed drop going forward here. It takes a little bit of damage from its own life orb. Charizard trying to get a little bit of speed control back, opting for that max airstream into the Weezing and is finally going to take it out of this match. Um, a little later than the first game, but still a big moment getting that off of the field here. Yeah, absolutely a big moment there. And the Zashi now also getting that Intrepid Sword boost because Weezing left the field and Regigigas with that slow start. So, you know, I, I think that uh, this has certainly an interesting start to the game because Gabriel's taking a lot of damage on that Charizard and on the uh, Whimsicott as well. Uh, but now Whimsicott could potentially position itself for a late game Tailwind, right? Uh, last time, I think part of the issue was that Alberto was able to, you know, stall out two turns of Tailwind and then so you're just one uh, double protect on Calyrex away from fully stalling it out and then Calyrex can sweep through. This time around, Gabriel actually hasn't even set up that Tailwind. You can just sacrifice the Charizard here, protect the Zashi, and if Charizard faints, uh, then you get that free switch into Whimsicott, then Whimsicott can just go for that Tailwind. And this is the problem with Regigigas once Weezing goes down. It often feels like a liability where uh, it sticks on the field, it can do a little bit of damage after Max is over, but it just it feels like you're often playing a 2v1 against it. Of course, actually, of course, with that Protect, the Calyrex is just going to hit the Astro Barrage and will pick up the KO on the Charizard, finally going down, and it's going to get itself a nice little special attack boost in the process, which is... <laughs> Definitely, definitely scary. It already hits for so much damage, and anytime it picks up a KO, being able to deal more damage is just terrifying. Um, Zashian taking barely damage from this Max Drake from the Regigigas here. Of course, though, as you said, with that wheezing it down, the Whimsicott will have its prankster again to try and get some of that speed control that was Gabriel's loss so far in this match. Yeah, and it's just so critical to conserve this Whimsicott for late game Tailwind, right? Part of the issue last time around was that Calyrex was able to really just sweep through very early, uh, or very late, I should say, but uh, with no... Uh, the Calyrex was just able to outspeed everything naturally at that point. Now this time around, you get the Whimsicott out, you get that Tailwind up, and it's really difficult to stall out all the four turns of Tailwind like Gabriel's going to get this time around, because the Calyrex is already out on the field as well. And so uh, Gabriel, I think, in a really, really strong position in this endgame right now, especially because that Zashin was able to get that attack boost after Weezing left the field. 
field as well. And I would assume a plus one Behemoth Blade can just KO Calyrex because it's just a very frail Pokemon. So uh, Gabriel, I think, in a solid position right now. Uh, you just want to make sure you set up that Tailwind. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm not sure Regigigas really even has too many options here. Um, Gabriel contemplating a switch here. You know, Zacian does have that speed drop. Uh, and so if Zacian's like really, really slow, kind of like what we saw, like maybe uh, Gabriel's afraid that even after a Tailwind, the Calyrex can outspeed. But Zacian is just so naturally fast that I think just going for a Tailwind and a Behemoth Blade here is pretty safe into the Calyrex slot. And yeah, it looks like that's what Gabriel wants that for. From Alberto Zen, I mean, it's tough, right? Like, do you protect, you switch out. Uh, if you protect, then it's a free Behemoth Blade into that slot the next turn. And uh, maybe Regigigas is hoping for something like a critical hit right now onto the Zacian just to have a chance in this end game. This Behemoth Blade, of course, connecting no, right down and taking the Calyrex out of there. Doesn't matter how strong it is, if it is just knocked out of this field. The Regigigas going for the Ice Pump onto the Whimsicott, just taking it out of the field. But I mean, the Whimsicott got to do what it needed to do. It hit the field with that one HP, it set up the Tailwind. And I mean, all it needed to do was get that speed control. And now this Garchomp, there's no speed drop, has the tailwind, and I mean, we saw yesterday too just how strong Garchomp could be. Even though it's against this Regigigas with the Ice Punch, if they could take out the Regigigas, then there's going to be nothing really grounding it. Exactly, and Urshifu is good in the late game, but Urshifu doesn't match up very well into either of these Pokemon. You have the tailwind up. The Ice Punch from Regigigas actually does a sizable amount into that Garchomp, but not enough for a KO. Uh, and so I think Gabriel just in a really commanding spot right now. He actually has that Outrage option on Garchomp, which is really cool. It's not something you see very often, but it's really consistent here. It means that you don't have to miss a Rock Slide. Guarantees the knockout onto Regigigas if Regigigas gets targeted. Uh, Zashin here, you know, safe to go for something like that Sacred Sword. So I, I think, you know, here the thing is that Alberto does have Protect with both Pokemon. So, you know, maybe Alberto just considers protecting one and then attacking with the other hoping for something like a critical hit uh, and it is going to be the urshifu which start off with that protect or detect <laughs> so the outrage ends up ends up being targeted into that urshifu but not going to matter that sacred sword it does connect of course with that regigigas taking it out of the field here and it is going to be a 2v1 here and <laughs> everything in gabriel's favor here yeah, and I think, you know, smart on Gabriel to just distribute the damage evenly. Uh, well, what's interesting is that Outrage is uh, actually a random target there, but by going for the Sacred Sword on a Regigigas, like maybe Alberto had a chance if you actually protected the Regigigas there, and then the Outrage gets directed into the Regigigas, and then Urshifu uh, close combat KOs the Zacian. I'm not even sure our close combat KOs with Zacian being at max HP uh, in terms of investment. So yeah, now the double is going to come out. We are going to see that Outrage for the first time on the stream, and that is going to bring us to a Game 3 here in this set. And both of the games were so well played, but yeah, just getting that speed control and the end of the match was just absolutely pivotal. We saw in the first match, of course, Alberto managed to stall it out, but of course that late game tailwind, it just puts so much pressure to where these two Pokemon can really sweep. And I am really intrigued to see in game three, how they adjust there, especially now that Gabriel has that information that the Weezing will not get knocked out by AG Max Wildfire and if he opts to go for something different different instead though in the end he took the match anyway so yeah uh, i think just masterfully maneuvered by gabriel in this game and so uh, i think going into game three curious if there are any uh, lead mix-ups i think wheezing regigigas feels very consistent and uh, i'm not sure there are any like significantly stronger options uh gabriel on the other hand has been pretty content with uh, the whimscott charizard lead but like you mentioned here he now knows that it's not a guaranteed ko onto that wheezing and that makes things a lot dicier because it means that uh, you can stick on the field for a little bit longer so the question is is does he have any better adjustments right i don't think garchomp or landers can max in the set at all uh unless barring anything really really wild happening so then it feels like you know you're really stuck with zacian you could Lead Umbreon, I suppose, but Umbreon just feels so weak into Weezing plus Regigigas. So I think Whimsicott plus Charizard makes a lot of sense. You could still stick with that. Uh, and on Alberto's end, I don't, I, like I was saying, I would kind of like to see a turn one Max Hailstorm into Whimsicott, eliminate Whimsicott so it can't Tailwind. And if it can't Tailwind, then Calyrex Shadow Rider can perform a lot better in the end game. So I think those are two different ways that both players can approach the game. I feel like possibly an adjustment going into game three that could be reasonably made considering that Whimsicott was the game changer there in that game too. But that being said, let's get on to this game three, the game that's going to be knocking one of these strong competitors completely out of this Players Cup. So Regi Regigigas Weezing, of course, starting off here. 
with the Whimsicott to lead, but instead of the Charizard, often go with that Zacian here. So the thing about Zacian is that it does not get that attack boost immediately because the Weezing is out on the field, right? So that obviously limits its damage output. Surely Regigigas will survive if Behemoth played here, but, you know, still take a fair amount of damage. However, this uh, Zacian does not have something like Substitute, which you occasionally see instead of opting for Wild Charge to really try to hit those Kyogres, for example. Uh, and so this is definitely an interesting position where you can do a lot of damage with Behemoth Blade, but Weezing, we know, has Will-O-Wisp, and so you could just go for something like a Max Hailstorm and Will-O-Wisp turn one from Alberto Zed. That gets you a knockout onto the Wimscott, gets the burn onto Zacian, uh, and definitely puts you in a decent position here. So you can see Gabriel recognizing, hey, Wimscott might just faint after turn one. I really need this Tailwind up because if not, not Zashi is just going to sweep through me in the next couple of turns. So good awareness to just go for that tailor to start off the game. Of course, Alberto here. I mean, there's not much different ways to be starting off with this lead here. So we will see that Regigigas Max once again in this game three. It'll be interesting to see where it's targeting, what seems to be the bigger threat going forward here. That Whimsicott, of course, gets that tailwind, just getting some speed here. And Zashian with that Behemoth Blade is going to be dealing some good damage here, targeting into the Regigigas and bringing it down to under half of its health. But it's all going to come down to this Regigigas and it is going to be that Max Hailstorm into the Whimscot. It's exactly the play that you said that you wanted to see. Alberto responded and is going to bring that Whimscot down to the Sash, but setting the hail here is not really going to make a difference and is going to be taking this Whimscot out of here. Yeah, let's see if Weezing is going for that Will-O-Wisp. It is going to go for the Will-O-Wisp, and it does connect. That's such a critical hit there, just because Zacian otherwise can just run through with damage, right? Especially if you actually eliminate the Weezing. Now you have a Zacian that's spur and didn't get that attack boost to start off the game, so its damage output is significantly reduced, and it makes me wonder whether or not a Behemoth Blade can actually even KO the Regigigas right now. It looks really, really close, uh, but yeah, there's like a chance I think Regigigas can actually survive another Behemoth Blade now, so definitely a strong start to the game uh, from both players. I mean, you get the Tailwind up. I think I'd prefer Alberto's position more than Gabriel's right now but i think gabriel can absolutely manage to pull off the comeback right now uh the the main thing is basically how do you mitigate these next couple of turns with the regigigas and also can you put on the pressure so that alberto is forced to bring that calyrex as quickly out as possible it looks like gabriel's opting to just you know try to double up onto the regigigas here and i think that's a strong option guarantee a ko onto that wheezing doesn't do very much in this matchup after the uh burn comes out right so once you knock out regigigas you kind of have wheezing out on the field for alberto's and it doesn't do very much and it just sits around and can go for sludge bomb at best but that's effectively it and so uh, i like gabriel's decision here to try to just eliminate the regigigas and try to basically play like a 2v1 matchup going into the last couple of turns where you just leave wheezing on the field but that's a great max card from regigigas to stall out a turn of tailwind and the double into the regigigas to try and take it out it's not gonna matter if that regigigas is just refuses to go down getting that max card means too there's gonna be no axe wildfire set out on the field and then we're using it's a sledge bomb into Charizard and does poison it. Of course, though, the Charizard does have the Lumberry, burns the Lumberry very early on, but at least it won't be taking additional poison damage on top of this hail chip going forward. Yeah, so nice max guard by Regigigas there, recognizing, hey, I'm probably not actually going to get another attack off at this point, so might as well just burn a turn of uh, Gabriel's Tailwind. So Gabriel, of course, could have capitalized by doubling up onto the Weezing there, but if you do that and Alberto, you know, just says, ah, Regigigas is going to faint anyway, I'm just going to go for attack and actually gets a max strike off here, Charizard would take so much damage. So, yeah, in the end, both players just going for their safest options, and we're going to see Zacian start off this next turn with the Behemoth Blade. Behemoth Blade not doing as much since it is burnt, and is not going to do enough to pick up the KO on the Reggie Gigas. Of course, though, the Charizard covering for that. It's a big, <laughs> hits a big move into it, and it does pick up that KO, as well as setting the fire and residual damage for the turns to come here. But, I mean, that Whimsicott is no longer in the match, and Tailwind is going to be expiring pretty soon. <laughs> We're using with another sludge bomb. <laughs> Guess the poison yet again. And the Blumberry was already burned. That's <laughs> so fortunate to get the poison twice in a row. Um, <laughs> that wheezing, I mean, the wheezing, of course, doesn't do too much left on the field after the burn, but it's definitely proving to be a little bit of a nuisance here. 
Yeah, definitely a little bit of a nuisance. Gabriel still has Tailwind up, and so Alberto's in a really tough spot, right? You don't really want to bring out that Urshifu out because it's just going to faint from a max airstream. Uh, and then, you know, after the wildfire and the hail damage, you're done for the turn. So it's going to be that Calyrex instead. And so one thing that's really big for Gabriel right now is you can actually go for a max airstream to ensure that you outspeed Calyrex in this end game. Notably, he also brought that Landorus in the back with that Assault Vest, so it looks like he's contemplating, yeah, switching in, go for that max airstream, you get a speed boost, and now you have uh, a Charizard and a Landorus that can potentially outspeed the opposing side. And so, I, I think another consideration you could go for if you're Gabriel is just doubling up onto the Calyrex, uh, but of course, Calyrex here might consider going for a Protect. Now, if it doesn't Protect, then maybe Max Airstream and Behemoth Blade actually picks up the Knockout, but it uh, looks like Gabriel is going to want to play it safe here, and I definitely agree with that. This play kind of covers every option. If the uh, Calyrex Protect it feels like you're just actually in a game-winning position. Even if it doesn't protect, and it notably doesn't protect, uh, you know, this is still certainly a fine play. <laughs> Taking a lot of damage from that airstream here as the Charizard and the Landorus get a nice little speed boost. Astro Barrage coming out. Of course, with that Assault Vest on the Landorus, not going to pick up the KO. That's a good amount to Charizard and bringing it down into range where Sludge Bomb from this Weezing can pick it up and eliminate it. But... I mean, that Airstream boost with the Landorus, I believe there's one more turn of tail Tailwind left as well. So the speed boost that the Landorus is getting combined with that can definitely put a little bit of pressure here. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to play towards this end game. There's still turns of GMAC Wildfire as well. So the Calyrex is going to faint after this turn. Uh, and it looks like Tailwind actually just expired, but because of that speed boost on the Landorus, uh, you know, Landorus now will be able to outspeed the uh, Calyrex. So what's really interesting about this end game is both players know the Landorus does not have Protect, right? It's an Assault Vest set. So Alberto might want to try to position himself to get that Urshifu out, to get that Sucker Punch, right? And just knock out the Landorus. Azashian is burned, but that still matches up pretty well here in this end game so i think from gabriel's side you might want to just go for a rock slide uh he's opting for that earthquake but that can be really really risky the landers i think now outspeeds the zashian uh depends on how the zashian is actually trained but we er earlier saw that uh, it actually went after whimsicon it given that it has max hp investment wouldn't be surprised if it yeah is pretty slow here so if you're going for an earthquake you have to protect here i think otherwise you'll just take far too much damage on your zashian combined with burn and hail you'll probably just faint i think from gabriel's side a play that you can make is just rock slide and go for sacred sword into calyrex that covers for the option of Calyrex switching out. If Calyrex stays in, well, that's your biggest threat out of the way, but, oh, he's not gonna go for it, and he just Earthquakes himself! <laughs> Big Earthquake here, actually knocking out his own Zashin here. It takes out the Calyrex and the Weezing as well. Earthquake just proving to be too powerful, though, and nothing on the field left to stick around. Wow, I mean, if Urshifu's in the back for Alberto, you just bring it out and Sucker Punch now, I think. Uh, Earthquaking, especially when you're damaging your side partner, is always risky, and with the Landers being faster than that Zashian, yeah, just goes down for nothing. I think Gabriel might have been hoping to see a switch out there, right? Uh, for the Calyrex to switch out into the Urshifu, and then try to snipe it with an Earthquake and a uh, Sacred Sword there, but the reality was that the Landers is faster than the Zashian anyway, so that doesn't even actually cover for that option. Had Zashian actually just protected there, you'd be in a 2v1 scenario where uh, Urshifu can't deal with both Pokemon at once, and so I think all Gabriel needed to do was uh, protect in that scenario. Now, the reason he might have not wanted to protect was because he was trying to cover for that Urshifu switch in. Uh, if you protect and Urshifu actually comes in for free, then you can sucker punch the KO the Landers. But in the end, uh, I think Earthquake plus attacking that turn is uh, maybe the worst possible outcome. Now Gabriel will just faint to a sucker punch. So that was a really, really critical turn. And that's why every turn matters so much in Pokemon. Uh, and Alberto uh, in this end now should just be able to pick off the KO with sucker punch here. Of course, that sucker punch coming out and Landorus is being taken down for Alberto to take this set to a 2-1 and will be advancing on. Advancing